Hello everyone and welcome to another Nintendo Switch news video here on the Commonwealth Realm. As you might have noticed, we are at PAX East and have had the opportunity to play a bunch of upcoming Nintendo Switch titles. And together with me today is uh, obviously Joseph Ferris and a special guest, Dr. Wiley. Yes, I'm here as well. What kind of magic is this? <laughs> I don't know. The magic of airplanes, I guess. I don't know. Exactly, so we are united here in Boston, Massachusetts for PAX East and uh, we had the opportunity during the press hour yesterday to play a bunch of um, upcoming Nintendo Switch games. But mm -hmm. let us begin by talking about the games that were not present, namely Mario Tennis Aces. Mm -hmm. I mean, um, it was quite weird that mm -hmm. it wasn't there. I kind of expected it, but mm, it might be like early development still. Too early for like a demo. Mm -hmm. It's also maybe because of the fact that this seems like an odd choice to have it PAX, but at the same time there was also other Nintendo like exclusives there, like made by Nintendo, like Tropical Freeze and uh, Hyrule Warriors, but that's also just because they were ports and stuff. Mm -hmm. So yeah, it was otherwise a pretty weird lineup there, but at the same time the lineup was pretty solid too. It was, with a bunch of nindies as well. It was very solid, and I think uh, we could go over them individually. Beginning with uh, Crash Bandicoot, which was playable for the first time on the Nintendo Switch. Yes, there was a bunch of other games still for the first time too. I mean, maybe one other. I don't quite remember. Wolfenstein. Wolfenstein and No More Heroes. But yeah, there was also Crash Bandicoot. You know, I'm super excited for it. Been a huge Crash Bandicoot fan. My first favorite game character. So playing him on the Switch will be great visually, because you know people are gonna want to know how it looks visually, and it's hard to tell with this off-screen footage that you're seeing. But um, it's it's definitely lower resolution, some lower resolution textures, but you know, it still looks pretty good for it being on the Switch. Yeah, and especially in handheld mode, I think it will play really well. Uh, obviously, it's not 60 frames per second, it's 30 frames per second. And it's 30 frames per second on every platform anyway. So. Yeah, and people have been complaining a little bit about the visuals, but I feel like cra just getting Crash on the Switch and having the option to bring it handheld uh, is, is, the, is the biggest gift that we can get from this. And basically, it plays as we would have expected, so Crash is definitely a title that you should pick up when it comes to July. <laughs> I mean, they had to hold back on the visuals, it's kind of obvious with uh -huh. like, the Switch. Switch. But still, I played it, and I haven't played Crash Bandicoot that much, but I had a great experience, it was fun, It was the controls were nice, the visuals were nice, everything worked, I didn't. I don't have any complaints really, I yes. will buy it. And then on that day we got the announcement of Spyro the Reignited Trilogy, which they did officially announce for the Switch, but it was accidentally put on Nintendo Europe's shop for pre-order for the Switch, so it's safe to say it's good. Yeah, 2019. Probably. Yeah. High chance. They, High want, chance. they want to get uh, Insane Trilogy first on the Switch and obviously capitalize on that, but anyways. Uh, other people that want to capitalize on the Switch are obviously from software. They had a playable demo, actually a 20 minute demo of uh, Dark Souls. Which I didn't get to play because that demo was so long and everyone in front of me was just taking a sweet old time. <laughs> exactly, and the thing was also that a lot of uh, the public was uh, getting in and pouring in. Mm -hmm. So uh, it was a quite similar situation uh, to the uh, to what we saw at E3, mm -hmm. uh, with people just packing around the uh, Nintendo booth. Yeah, but you got to play the toy demo, didn't you? Yes, I did. And uh, what I can say is that we only got to play the very beginning of the uh, of, you know, of Dark Souls. Mm -hmm. uh, I would say that it plays okay. Uh, the problem is that it does take a toll on the system, mm -hmm. and it can be jaggy on on the edges. Mm -hmm. In the sense that the frame rate uh, can pop in and out at, at times. Um, yeah, but the question is, like, the jagginess on the other hand is also a little bit Dark Souls 1. Because Dark Souls 1 was an odd game. Mm -hmm. Like, there were a lot of unfair points. It was a bit, a bit rusty and a bit jagged, like, everywhere in terms of motion and locations that weren't very handy for you to fight. So, in general, that's... Also a bit of a Dark Souls 1 port. Yeah, but overall I would say it's a well-ported game. Uh, yeah, it, it looks well-ported. It, it, is, um, it is a Dark Souls, as we remember it, mm -hmm. but we can see definitely the age of the game. Yeah, did you ever play the Dark Souls when it came out? I, I played the original one, yeah, okay. I, I did, I did, but that was uh, back on the uh, PS3. So. I've only ever played uh, Dark Souls 3 and uh, Bloodborne, but some people think Bloodborne's not a Souls game, so look well, at books at Wiley. Well, 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 <laughs> Bloodborne is similar to Dark Souls. Very similar, it's just, it's just very not, similar. But it isn't like part of the Souls series. 
yeah, I still can just consider it a Souls game because the gameplay and the, and oh, the yeah, aspect it's, of it's certainly the the mechanics. That's just essentially yes. what it comes down to. And mm -hmm. I've played a lot of Dark Souls, so I'm uh, uh, yeah, Dark Souls for the Nintendo Switch. That's like a, a no-brainer for me, really. Exactly. Yeah, yeah. it lo looks really good. Honestly. Okay, too. another game that was also a playable one actually is new and it's coming to the Switch. That was uh, Travis Strikes Again, mm -hmm. and we had the pleasure to meet uh, and actually speak with Soi uh, Suda, mm -hmm. uh, the developer of uh, No More Heroes, the Killer series, and of course Travis Strikes mm -hmm. Again, yeah. and stay for a very special interview at the end of uh, this video, mm -hmm. which will detail more about the game. But based on the demo that we got to play, you got to play, man. So it, many lines. <laughs> yeah, I know. But the thing is that the game is incredibly well uh, programmed. Mm -hmm. That's good. It is very <laughs> fast paced. It has a very good structure. Yes, it may be a blend of a AAA game and an indie title. Mm -hmm. Because, uh, as also Suda said, this is not No More Heroes Three. It's mm -hmm. um, side title, well, uh, let's say a side story for, for Travis, yes. because he's gone from being an assassin to becoming more of a uh, uh, protagonist in a video game. Mm -hmm. and a that, literal video, yeah. Uh, exactly, yeah. but the game plays very well, the art style is of course beautiful, and it's very co-op heavy. Good, you still shake the, 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 the beam katana to yes. charge it? Yes, you do, yes. you do. Good. So you would probably prefer to play it with the Joy-Con. Mm -hmm. Instead of the Pro Controller, which was the option that we had mm -hmm. uh, when playing this uh, this demo, but uh, the game is uh, definitely going to be a very good addition to the Switch library. That's good. Yeah, I hope this is a. I hope this game does well because this means that we'll have more of a chance to see No More Heroes Three, like the legit three, and then remakes on remasters of the first two because I really want to play those and I don't want to buy them on eBay on the Wii. <laughs> and obviously, Travis was much. Yes, Travis was much. Always. And Every for, character for Smash. <laughs> yeah, but Shrek um, for Smash. what was playable of uh, Travis Strikes Again was, of course, the section we saw in the uh, Nintendo Direct. Mm -hmm. uh, that being that uh, first boss and that uh, corridor uh, level. Mm -hmm. Because there would, there would be different styles of levels based on different indie style games. Yes. And that will give a lot of variety, I think, to mm -hmm. Travis Strikes Again. But stay tuned for that interview. Yes. Uh, next game that was uh, playable and actually very surprisingly playable was Wolfenstein mm -hmm. The New Colossus. Yes, that was the first game I walked up to and you know I played it on PC. Uh, I didn't finish on PC yet, I really want to. And it's, and you know, the first thing that was coming to my mind was like, oh, the frame rate looks very eh, the textures look very eh, but like overall, I just realized I've been playing most of this game on the portable anyway. And this game is also still in progress. They still, our panic button is like hands down like one of the best Switch uh, porters like there are. They ported Doom and Rocket League, and this looks to be uh, continuing their repertoire of being genies when it comes to porting games to the Switch. Like it runs good enough. Like there's still some frame rate dips, but you're basically getting the same exact game. But on the Switch, they're going to make no comp. Other than graphics, they're making no more compromises from there. Yeah, it was actually like extremely surprising to mm -hmm. see that game run that well. Just like Doom was quite quite big of a surprise for us to see mm -hmm. run on a Nintendo Switch, which is essentially just a tablet but just turned up to 11. Mm -hmm. That's how you need to see it, and it's, that it's able to run on that thing is amazing. And then you can have Wolfenstein. On the go, mm -hmm. and that's all we really though with the Switch. On the go, that's the biggest thing. Mm -hmm. like and the, the graphics will be way better on the go than on a TV. Exactly. So. Yeah, we like, didn't get to play it in handheld mode. It's only on TV, but still. No, that's true. We didn't get to play it in unlock mode, but yeah, uh, still no release date. I, yet, I just, just feel just like Bethesda is really putting their effort into creating a solid port, and um, the reception of Doom definitely was additional motivation. The only problem with Wolfenstein is that we still have no idea when it's coming out. Mm -hmm. I'm, I'm feeling it'll be sooner than later. Um, May? It, it, it'll come? No, I actually think it's going to be after E3. Not long after E3, but yeah, something like that. But truth be told, I, I really, we really just don't know. I hope it's not a full year after the original game came out. But these ports, they are not easy to make. They're very, they're very complicated to make. Because you got to figure out which compromises work, which compromises don't. Yeah. <laughs> 
Okay, let's get back to uh, Nintendo now for a moment because uh, we had two still playable Nintendo ports. Mm -hmm. And that is, uh, the first one was obviously Hyrule Warriors, the Definitive Edition. It's already out in Japan. Yes. Uh, it's just a matter of getting it over. Yes, it was playable. It plays like Hyrule Warriors. It has much better loading times. Mm -hmm. And what else is there to say you can play as Breath of the Wild and Yes, 60 frames per second. Yes! 60! <laughs> I just wanted to say that. Yes. 60 frames per second. It looked amazing. That yes. Is, that is important. I think that's the only thing that is making me want to get the on Switch, to be yeah. honest. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Exactly. To be honest, yeah. the 60 frames were so buttery smooth. Ooh, it but made it, me happy. But, yeah. but it's first coming out in May, which is a little late compared to, to the Japanese version, which is already it out. Is. It, that's a little strange, but... You know, it's going to be a slow month anyway, anyway and yeah, but, you know, or did we South Park the Factory by Hulk? We didn't see that there, which is a little strange. Yeah, it was a bit disappointing. Uh, it's right around the corner, and uh, yeah, I just hope that, um, since U Ubisoft didn't have a booth, they did. that might explain why the game wasn't played really yeah. well. And it's not probably the best game to have among children. True, but at the same time, there was... You had Wolfenstein. You still have Wolfenstein. Yeah, still... Wolfenstein. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> Exactly. Yeah, that, that's a bad excuse. Uh, but uh, speaking of, uh, you know, at least, uh, children-friendly or children-looking games, mm -hmm. Donkey Kong Country Tropical Freeze. Yes. It's, it's running so well on the Switch. It Incredibly is. Incredibly well. Mm -hmm. Yeah, like, it was always a well-running game even on Wii U. But, like, damn, 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 we, we only got to play the Funky Kong mode, because, you know, they want to push that new Funky Kong mode. Because, you know, Funky Kong is the most OP character in video games ever. <laughs> <laughs> Didn't think that would ever happen, but it's true. Oh, uh, yeah, he is very much an easy character to play as. He has a double jump and a float. It does, spikes do not kill him. Like, you can't, like, you can barely move in Spike except jump, but still, Spikes do not kill him. And Safe Sam will be playing as him, like, at first. Yeah, but we were informed that the two versions, you can play as Funky Kong either in normal mode, which is, uh, I think, two lives, and then, yeah, and then you have the Funky Kong mode, which has five lives yeah. for Funky Kong. That's true. And I think that Funky Kong will definitely be a very fun character for. Uh, younger, less experienced. Something. Yeah, because tropical, because the, the Donkey Kong Country games, especially the newer ones, are no joke. They are hard. They're like brutal. they're, they're brutal. freaking brutal. I remember Donkey Kong Country Returns, especially. Like I pulled my hair out constantly, especially at that final boss. And tropical Freeze was just also the same way. They don't, they don't mess around. Retro Studios never mess around, but where are they? What are they doing? Come on, E3! Where are they doing? Like, you want new games, you don't want ports. Well, it did look good, though. Yeah, like and, the, and the loading the, times are much, much better than on the Wii U. Yeah, seriously. The perfect. controls were a bit weird, in my opinion, though. I've never played, like, the Donkey Kong, like, after it returned on the Wii. I haven't really touched it, mm -hmm. but I played Tropical Freeze, and in my opinion, like, the walking and swimming was really weird. I think it's just, it's just something you need to get used to. Exactly. Yeah, I think as well. Exactly. Uh, because it's it definitely doesn't control like a traditional Donkey Kong Country game. I don't think there's new mechanics they put in there and stuff. And it, yeah, you just gotta get used to it when you st from when you start to when you. It, it's easy to get used to, really. It's different when you're playing it at a at an event at a demo and playing it at your in the comfort of your home. <laughs> Okay, uh, I think that sums up uh, Donkey Kong Country Tropical Freeze uh, mm -hmm. rather well, yeah. and uh, we also had some Nindies. Yeah, I didn't get a chance to play a, like any Nindies. I, I got honest, to play but... a little bit of Messenger, Ooh, but yes. and that game flows incredibly well. But then again, it's Devolver Digital, and mm -hmm. Devolver you... Digital knows what they're doing. Exactly, yes. they know what they do. They are like the big star of the indie style, yes, sixteen-bit uh, bit um, pasta. And uh, yeah, all the all the games, also SNK Heroes, uh, was that okay? Playable. Oh, I saw that game running, and it looks really like choppy. The frame rate, and I'm just like, okay, I know it's a, it's a work in progress, but guys, the, why is this running at 20 frames per second right now? Like, it needs to be 60 or something. <laughs> yeah, but the developers of SNK are yeah at. Uh, Packs, mm, okay, good. and they also announced that uh, Legacy Edition is coming to the Switch. All okay. the games, and uh, I think this, uh, the series is only like 40 years old. It's it's, it's freaking old. Yeah, 
It sounds like the oldest video game hit. Yeah, one of the very, very old uh, franchises, but I don't think it's only been video games. Also. But mm -hmm. the, the collection is at least coming to the Switch. A bunch of other indie games seen in the Nindies uh, presentation were, were also playable, but also some other indie games uh, that were very, very impressive, including... Um, what was that game called? Flinthook? Flinthook! Yes! <laughs> My children, we, we found the creator of Flint Hook. He was standing there, he had his own booth, not at Nintendo, but Flint Hook is... I think it's an exclusive for the Switch, I'm not quite sure of that. I think it is. It's a really good game. It feels amazing. Like, as the general idea of the game is you have a hook, there are rings everywhere, you can hook on those rings and pull yourself forward, and that way you can get through the map, you need to defeat enemies, and essentially some sort of dungeon crawl your way through. Um, it looked amazing, and the rings and like the whole hooking mechanic felt great. Like, it couldn't be any better, to be honest. Mm -hmm. It looks really good. I saw oh, you very play. addictive. Incredibly addictive. Mm -hmm. Especially with uh, some obscure characters, like a washing machine. And uh, oh. which was no, 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 no that's, that's a different that game. Was a, that was game. Not, yeah. But that was incredible. Mm -hmm. That was so addictive. Uh, that uh, four-player uh, game with the hats. Yes. Which game was so addictive? I forget what it was called. We need to find the name. Uh, it will be in the it's below in the, the video. It's in the, it's in the video. It's, it's put it there, editor. Please. Scott. It in and then we also saw Layers of Fear playable on the Switch. It was the. Um, I forget what it was called, but it was like the comes with all the DLC edition, you know, the game of the year edition, whatever they call it. Definitive, whatever. Yeah, that's all. That's already available on the Switch. It's a pretty solid horror game. Uh, you'll, you'll. I remember playing it on PC. I shit my pants multiple times. So yeah, maybe give that a shot. It runs surprisingly well on the Switch too, because it didn't run too well on the PC or the PS4. So yeah, if you're a fan of that, check that out as well. Polish developer Blooper Team. Interesting name. Okay, interesting. now let's move over to what probably I've been waiting for, and that is the interview with uh, the developer of Normal Heroes Travis Strikes Again. Yes, let's get on to it. Let's get on to it. I have a very special guest here, uh, 251, the creator of the killer series of uh, <laughs> Normal Heroes 1 and 2, and now Travis Strikes Again. So, uh, what is different this time around? We left Travis in a very special situation of the Normal Heroes 2. So this, this game's going to be a completely different style from 1 and 2. Um, instead of being an assassin, Travis is going to go inside games and fight completely different enemies inside there. The gameplay is similar to Normal Heroes 1 and 2. You fight a long, uh, large wave of enemies and then you fight a boss. Just like in 1 and 2. Yeah, that's the same, the same as, as you'll see if you play it. You have changed the theme of the game. It's no longer assassins, it's no longer the assassin missions. Uh, but you still the gameplay is still the same as it was in the previous Normal Hero game. This time actually there's a, there's a totally unique brand new battle system. And they wanted to make it so you could play with a single Joy-Con. So you use less buttons and the, and the trigger buttons will become more important. And so you can set four different skills at a time. Uh, one to A, B, X, Y. And you hold down L and use each of them. And you can mix and match the skills as you like. And how well you use the skills is going to determine how well you do in the game. There's no sort of story in the game. You still have a story, just like in Normal Hero 1 and 2. Yeah, it'll continue the story from 1 and 2, it'll be 7 years later. Travis is a bit older now, though, so he'll be stinkier than he was before. So, you know, he, and he's, he's drunk so much beer now that, that uh, his, his voice has got all messed up. Very cool. Travis Joyce again. It's coming later in 20 years. This year. Yeah, yeah, yeah. For you. And Travis for Smash? Yeah. If everyone pushes it, if the media pushes it, that, that will make it possible. Yeah. yeah. So let's say Travis for Smash. 